Hello everyone and in this lecture I'm going to show you how you can use Geometry Reader to find out the coordinates of the parent and adjust your subviews or your child views in a more relative layout kind of a format. So a requirement sometimes you have is that your one view has to be twice as big as the other view. So how can you achieve those kind of layouts in Surf UI? So let's go ahead and first create a very simple layout. I'm going to go ahead and add a vertical stack. And we're just going to use the very basic Z stacks, or uh, which is called the Z index stacks, so that you can see all the stuff. So it won't really be, be some sort of animation or something, but it will be Z stacks filled with color so that you can actually see what's going on. So now I'm going to go ahead and add a Z stack to it. All right. Inside the Z stack, I can also add another vertical stack so I can start adding some things. The only reason I'm using a Z stack over here is that so I can provide it some sort of a width and height. You don't really have to use it, but this is just for display purposes. So let's go ahead and add another vertical stack in here. And this vertical stack will contain many different things. The first item it will have is a stack which will have some sort of a text which will be calling first one as you can see on the right hand side. Now the second one will be another Z stack and this obviously you don't have to use Z stacks. I'm simply using Z stacks so I can actually show you by coloring them with a background color and all those things. But the concept over here is more important than the actual controls or the views that I'm using. Now, if you look at this Z stack or even this vertical stack or Z stack, you can see that we are not really using the whole width or the height of the view. If I select this particular Z stack, you can see it kind of ends with the content, but we can change that. We can say that this is actually going to be the complete thing that we will be using. So I can go ahead and set the frame and I can say over here, minimum width, can be zero and then maximum width can be infinity all right and so on so now i can also say over here that minimum height can be zero and maximum height can be infinity all right now, if you click on the Z stack, you can see it's actually filling up the whole thing. Great. Inside this Z stack, we have a vertical stack because I do want to add some multiple items and I'm adding the first one and the second one. Let's go ahead and change the background color of this one so that we can actually see it a little bit better. So I'm going to say color.pink. And for this one, I'm going to go ahead and say background color, which is color.purple. Okay, both of them are actually appearing correctly, but what I really wanted to do is that I want this particular Z stack or the first one to expand and take basically one third of the vertical stack or in this case, the Z stack. So the question is, how can I do that? How can I access the Z stacks coordinates, which is pretty big, as you can see, it's actually the whole view inside over here and give it to the Z stack, which is the child of vertical stack. All of this you can accomplish by using something called a geometry reader. So let's go ahead and add that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and surround all of this by something called a geometry reader. And I'm going to enclose all of this with geometry reader. There we go. The geometry reader in this case is a closure and I'm going to access the closure by the letter G. You can obviously use anything you want. Now the G over here represents the coordinates of this Z stack. And now these coordinates are available to the vertical stack and basically all the child views inside the vertical stack or all the child views inside the Z stack. Now you have to make sure that your child views of the Z stack are actually coming inside the closure for the geometry reader so that it can obviously access those things. 
So now let's go ahead and try to access those things. So I'm going to go ahead over here to the first one and I'm going to just set the frame and set the width to be g dot size dot width and the height you can already see it's changing that's great g dot size dot height and I want it to be one third so let's see what happens there we go it's actually filling out to be one third I can also say half and now it will fill up half of it so it's much bigger now the same we can do for the other one the purple one so I'm going to go ahead and copy all of this, the frame, and put it right here. There we go. So now what we are doing is that we are setting this with width to the half. The width is actually the width of the g dot size or width, which is coming from the z stack. But the important part is the height. So basically, this particular z stack, which is the purple one or the second one, is taking up the half of the parent, which in this case is z stack. And the other one, which in this case is a Z stack, which is the first one, is also taking half. And you can see now it's actually filling up really nicely and it is filling up the whole layout, which is part of the Z stack because everything is a child of the Z stack. Now, what if I want this to be one third? Well, I'm just gonna go ahead and change it to one third. Great. Now what if I go ahead and add an image to it? How will that image look like? So I'm gonna go ahead and add an image of a cat. Now if I don't specify anything, you can see the cat image is very, very large. It's actually even on the width, it's actually coming out of everywhere. So let's go ahead and make it resizable by calling the resizable function. By making it resizable, it's going to try to fit in there, but you can see it's very much squished because this one is taking half, which is the pink one. This one is taking the other part, which in this case is a one third one. And whatever is the remaining is actually being taken by the image. We can actually change that. We can actually provide some sort of a frame to it so that it can take more space. So first of all, the width will be g.size.width and for height, we can actually provide a much big, nicer height, which is g.size.height. And now you can see that it takes on the height of the parent, which in this case is coming from the Z stack. But you can also obviously make sure that it looks nice by dividing it by two and making sure that everything is arranged properly. So there you have it. This is how the Z stack works, or this is how the geometry reader works. Obviously, this is not correct at this particular moment because it's the distribution that we are doing is wrong. And this is taking half, this is taking one third, this is taking half. So this definitely has to be, you have to make sure that everything is correct or else it's not gonna fit. All right, and that's perfectly up to you that how you arrange these things. But using the geometry reader does give you an idea or does give you a flexibility to lay out your SIF UI views, which are based on the relative measurements, where you can say, you can say that this particular pink one will be twice as big as the image one, or this particular Z stack will be the one fourth of the size of the other ones. So it's definitely possible to do these kind of things in SIF UI. So hopefully you can use Geometry Reader in your applications and benefit from it if you want to use those kind of uh, dif distinctive uh, user interfaces if you want to create, you can definitely use Geometry Reader for that. If you want to learn more about Swift UI, then check out my Udemy course, Swift UI Declarative Interfaces for any Apple device. You can already see it's the highest rated course on Udemy with more than 600 students. This course is around eight hours long and I keep on adding new material to it. You can see that we're gonna start with building lists and navigation, even building grids in Surf UI, jumping into the MVVM design pattern and creating the complete app using MVVM design pattern. And one of the sections that I just added is integrating core data with Surf UI. So this is an incredible section which is going to show you how you can integrate 
your SurfUI application with core data and perform insertion, deletion, and fetching operations. Now, in order to get this course, the coupon for this course is already added in the YouTube description. So simply click on the link, coupon will be applied, and you will get the best deal for this course. Thank you so much for supporting my channel. And if you have any questions, let me know.